All right, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's live cooking demonstration. My name is Ryan Smith. I'm the Wellness Program Administrator with Georgia State University's Employee Development and Wellness Services. I trade, I am a registered dietitian, and I'm very excited to be cooking with you today. For today's recipe, we are going to be making spinach lasagna cups, uh, which is a bit of an interesting title, but you'll see how it all comes together. Before we jump into that, though, I do want to cover just a few quick things about the platform we're using today. We are going to be recording today's session so that you can view it at a later time or share it with a colleague who may not have been able to attend today. Throughout today's session, if you've got any questions, comments, feedback, ideas, we'd love to hear it. You can make use of the chat box feature on the right side of your screen. We'll be sure to check and read through all those comments at the end of today's presentation. With that being said, we'll go ahead and get started. So today's recipe, you're gonna need a few pieces of equipment. Mostly you'll just need some mixing bowls here and there to kind of combine all the ingredients. We're going to use a muffin tin. So the idea here is we are making a really quick and simple lasagna bake that's a little healthy. We've got some nice vegetables added in there. And by pre-portioning it in these muffin tins, we're able to reduce the calories, help have some portion control that's built in, and just give you a healthier serving size. Or if you want to meal prep, take these to work with you or on the go. So I really like the recipe. I love things that automatically divide things up into healthier serving sizes. It can be really great for our portion control. Of course, since we're using a muffin tin, we are going to make use of an oven. So you will need an oven in order to make this recipe. Um, this recipe is going to make a total of 12 of the little lasagna cups and a serving size is going to be about two of them. So you'll get six servings out of it total, which is really great if you're trying to feed other people in your household or really stretch through the rest of the work week uh, and have meals prepared for all of that. So let's go ahead and get started. In terms of ingredients, our vegetables today are going to be spinach and tomatoes. We'll talk a little bit more about those later. We are going to be making use of a couple different types of cheeses. We're going to use ricotta cheese as well as a shredded Italian cheese blend to bring in some good flavors. Both of the cheeses will be adding protein to the meal. The other source of protein we're going to be using is actually tofu. And let's get started there. So for this, you're going to use half a block of tofu. When you're shopping at the store, you can buy a full block in one of these containers or depending on where you shop, they may actually sell containers that are two half blocks next to each other. You're welcome to buy those and use one of them, or you can buy a full block and just cut it in half. Of course, you can scale up this recipe and use the full block if you've got two muffin tins and want to make a double batch. Tofu is a really, really great plant-based source of protein. It's super, super high in protein. It's made from soybeans. That's uh, it's just a processed soybean product. And it's a really nice way to just sneak in extra protein into really any plant-based meal. What we're going to do is I have, again, cut that block in half. And we're just going to put it in a bowl just big enough to fit it. And using a fork, uh, we're actually just going to press into it and break it up and mash it. If you prefer, you can actually use your hands, too. We're just kind of trying to crumble it, uh, get it to a texture that's a little more broken down so it's not just one big cube. Ultimately, we're going to be combining this with our cheeses and our spinach in order to make the lasagna filling. So traditionally, a lasagna filling might have ricotta cheese in it, uh, or it will have ricotta cheese, and it might have some meat in it. Maybe you're doing it with, like, ground beef or something like that. But since we're doing plant-based today, we're substituting that for tofu, which will still pack that protein punch, uh, but we're going to keep it plant-based. The nice thing about tofu compared to something like meat is it is far, far less expensive. I know one of the things that you can run into whenever you're purchasing meat items is that price can be up there. Tofu is super affordable, so we like to use it for that. So I've matched the tofu up. Hopefully you can get a feel for what that looks like there. We're going to, in just a larger mixing bowl, dump the tofu in there because we're going to end up combining all our ingredients. And as you dump it, if you see any large pieces maybe that didn't get fully mashed, you can press down on them with the fork a little bit. You don't have to be too picky because we're going to add additional ingredients in there. Next, we're going to use a single egg for this. This is going to help when we go to bake it. Uh, it's going to help everything bake together. It also adds a small amount of protein, some additional nutrients, since it is just one egg divided amongst 12 of the lasagna cups. It's not too big of a factor there. We're mostly using it for its baking properties. So I'm going to go ahead and crack the egg into just a small dish. The goal here is to 
just uh, beat it and then add it in with the tofu. So using my whisk here, we'll just beat the egg. Now, if you are someone, this is a plant-based dish. If you are someone who is, um, you know, very concerned with the environment or concerned with the treatment of animals when it comes to certain things like eggs, many stores do now sell cage-free eggs. Uh, they'll sell eggs from chickens that are raised in more humane ways, and you can look for that. This egg happens to be one of those. Uh, you can look for that if that's something that you are interested in in order to feel a little bit better about using the egg. All right, so we're just beating that until the color is consistent. We've mixed the yolk in with the rest of it. And then we will go ahead and just pour that on top of the tofu. All right. Now, next up, I mentioned we're going to use ricotta cheese. This is part skim ricotta cheese. So it's a little bit lower in fat content, which is nice. Uh, just shaving off a little bit of extra calories. You can buy whole ricotta cheese, which is going to be higher in fat and calories, but we're going to keep it a little lower with this and use skim. Now, most of the containers at the store are about 30 ounces. We're going to want to use 15 ounces today, which is roughly equivalent to one cup of ricotta cheese. So I've actually gone ahead and measured this out because I made a practice batch earlier. So I know there's 15 ounces left in here. So I will just go ahead and scoop this in, combining it with the tofu and the beaten egg that we had. Okay. Now we've got our ricotta cheese in there. The next ingredient we're going to add is going to be the Italian cheese. And I'm actually going to pause here. You've combined a couple ingredients. This is a great time to go ahead and preheat your oven. You'll want to preheat it to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. We've got a couple more steps that we're going to do before we use that. So this should give you plenty of time. So go ahead, get that oven preheated. And then coming back here, we're going to use the Italian shredded cheese. This is going to add some nice flavor to it. And we're going to add three quarters of a cup into this mixture. We're going to also save a quarter cup for later on in the recipe when we'll sprinkle it on top to give all the different lasagna cups a nice cheesy finish. So for now, I'm just going to measure out three quarters of a cup. So this is a quarter cup scoop here. So one quarter, one half, all right, and three quarters. And then the remaining is for me to sprinkle on top a little bit later. So we've got quite a few ingredients in here right now. The final thing that we're going to add to mix in with this is actually going to be our spinach. So this is about three quarters of a pound of frozen spinach that I bought. And then I microwaved it to thaw it, and now we're ready to add it in. One of the nice things about using frozen spinach is it's very affordable and you're able to keep it in your freezer for a long amount of time. So this is a great ingredient to keep on hand for a number of different recipes. You can heat it up in the microwave fairly quickly and then you're ready to add it into a dish like this. So I will go ahead and add in the spinach and the spinach is really where a lot of the nutrition from this meal is going to come into play. Spinach is an incredible superfood. It's very, very high in a variety of nutrients. Um, not just our vitamins, but also our minerals. It's a good source of things like iron as well, high in fiber. You can tell by that leafy green color, of course, that it's going to be a healthy choice for us whenever we see those bright colored vegetables. We know we're doing something good for our body. So at this point, what we want to do is just mix this all around and incorporate it. You've got that egg in there, and ideally you want to get a little bit of that egg in contact with the spinach and cheese mixture. It's going to help when it comes to baking everything a little bit later on in today's recipe. So I'm just mixing it around using a fork. If you want to, I'm trying to save on how many dishes I dirty. If you want to use something bigger like a mixing spoon or something like that, you absolutely can. Um, if you've got an electric mixer, you could also do that, but we're just keeping it simple today, mixing it by hand and getting that nice combination going there. So... The flavor of this ends up being really, really tasty. I'm a big fan of cheese, and I think lasagna is great. But in some lasagna dishes, the cheese can almost be a little overwhelming if you bite into it, and it's just cheese. So adding the spinach in here, adding the tofu, not only increases the nutrition of it, but just gives it a little more complexity in terms of texture and flavor. And I really end up enjoying that. So we've got that there. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our tomatoes. So all this is, is a can of diced P1 
peeled tomatoes. It's a 14 ounce can, which is just the amount we need. So again, we're using frozen spinach, we're using canned tomatoes. We're trying to keep that aspect pretty simple, easy to keep on hand. You're going to empty that into a container and then using a fork or a potato masher, if you have one, you can break down those big pieces of tomato. Sometimes the diced tomatoes can have some fairly large chunks in them. We don't want them to be too big so that they can fit in the muffin tin. I've gone ahead and done that. And then we're gonna add a little flavor by adding two teaspoons of Italian seasoning. Of course, lasagna is an Italian dish, so mixing that in there just makes sense. So now I'm gonna just stir in the Italian seasoning, add some flavor to that tomato portion. And one thing you may notice is we're not adding any salt to this recipe. The reason for that is that we've got two different types of cheeses, the ricotta cheese and the Italian cheese blend, and both of those are fairly salty. Cheese is a pretty salty food. So we don't wanna go overboard, we wanna keep it heart healthy. So we're not gonna add salt anywhere else in the recipe. We'll add flavor through things like the tomatoes, uh, the Italian seasoning, but the salt from the cheese will do, that'll be plenty for what we're trying to do. So now we've got our tomato mixture, we've got our spinach and cheese mixture, and let me get some of these out of the way. And the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna get our muffin tin ready. So just a normal 12 piece muffin tin here. And you'll want to spray it down with cooking spray just to make sure that they don't stick. Uh, at the end, if this goes well, you won't have to pry them up or anything. You should be able to just pull them right out of the muffin container and I'll show you what they look like at the end. So I'm gonna use cooking spray here and just spray each one briefly, just enough to make sure things aren't gonna stick. Now, this is a little bit of a change of taste, but instead of using like traditional lasagna noodles, we are actually gonna be using wonton wrappers. And I'm gonna to try to show you that a little more closely. So wonton wrappers can be found in the refrigerated section of a grocery store. Uh, I actually found them at Kroger next to the tofu. It's frequently with the like health foods or the more plant-based food. All it is, and I'll show you what they look like here, it's actually made from wheat. So it's not too far off from pasta. They're very, very thin though. It almost looks like a slice of American cheese, uh, but it's wheat. So it's, it's like using pasta or like using a grain-based product. But because they're so thin, they're lower in calories and lower in carbohydrates. So we're able to make this meal a little bit lower in calories overall, a little healthier. Sometimes pasta dishes can be a little imbalanced. You have a whole lot of grains and starch and maybe not as many vegetables. So we're trying to change that a little bit. So you'll take these and you're just gonna press them down into the muffin tin. And I'll do a couple of these real quick, just as an example. And you're gonna want to make sure that they're pressed down against the bottom. The edges are gonna fold in a little bit and that's totally normal. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're basically making these little pockets or these little cups that we'll be able to add the cheese and tomato mixture to in just a bit here. So I'm gonna continue lining these. Now, the nice thing about these wonton wrappers, in addition to being lower in calories, they're very affordable and they come in a pack of about 50. So you get a lot out of them. Uh, I was able to make several batches of this just using the single pack. So very, very affordable. And if you've never had them before, because they're made from wheat, they really don't taste any different than like pasta would at the end once it's baked. It becomes crispy. Uh, it's got a similar flavor. They're just very, very thin. So. I have lined these cups and I'll show you what that looks like a little more closely. Um, it almost looks like you're making little tostada, little taco salad type things, uh, cause that's what it ends up being like at the end once it's toasted. So we've got those there. And now what we're gonna do is we're going to use our cheese and spinach mixture. And we're just gonna add a big heaping scoop to each one of these. So the recipe calls for doing a heaping tablespoon. A heaping tablespoon just means Get a tablespoon measure, but be pretty generous with it. If it's overflowing a little bit, that's okay. Um, a lot of this is spinach, so we're packing in the nutrition, but we're also packing in the flavor with that delicious cheese as well. So we'll just go through, get some big scoops in there. And depending on how you portion this out, uh, we're actually gonna do a second layer of this in just a minute, you'll see. Depending on how you portion this out, you may have some extra cheese or spinach left. In experimenting with this recipe, I found that sometimes I have the perfect amount, and other times, because of the variation in my scoop size, there was some leftover stuff in the bowl. If that's the case, that's okay. You can go back and try to even it out a little bit or potentially save this for other applications. 
um, and combine it with some other foods later on. Okay, so we've got the spinach and the cheese part in there. Now we're gonna repeat the process, getting a scoop of our tomatoes and adding that on top as well. And as you're making this right now, it kind of looks like it's gonna be a mess, right? We're just kind of putting tomato on top of spinach, on top of cheese. We've got these really thin wonton wrappers. You might be wondering, how is it all gonna come together? You know, is it gonna stick? Is it gonna bake well? And the answer is it will. I will show you what it looks like at the end here. The second layer that we're gonna do of the wonton wrappers will actually seal all this in really nicely. And then when it bakes, it kind of fuses together and then pops out in that muffin shape. Okay, so we've done one layer and you can see the cheese and the tomato there. And now we're going to get more of the wonton wrappers here. And we're gonna, so the first time through, we pressed them down and I had my corners oriented in one direction. If you can still see your corners of the other wonton wrappers, you wanna do this in the opposite direction. So for example, if you had a square laying down the first time, what you'll do, let me try to demonstrate, you'll put a diamond over it the second time. What this does is it kind of lets it sealed together a little better when it comes time to bake them. So I'm going to press that down into it and you're gonna make another cup. So you'll line it up and then press down in the center. You're gonna come into contact with the ingredients below and squish them a little bit, that's okay. You are wanting it to be in contact because when it presses in like that, it means that the cheese is there. It's gonna make contact and melt and bake in the oven and then be nice and sealed together later. So we'll just continue this process a couple more times and catch these other ones up. And layering it like this is fun. Uh, it makes a really pretty aesthetic shape when it comes out at the end because the edges of these wonton wrappers will toast really nicely and fold up a little bit, kind of like they're um, enclosing on the lasagna mixture in the middle. Okay. We got that there and now let's repeat our process of getting a scoop of the spinach and cheese and then topping it with the tomatoes here as well. So like I mentioned, this is a great recipe for meal prepping or batch cooking because it has all these individually portioned pieces of lasagna. So it's great to, you know, grab two as a serving size, take them with you for lunch, um, potentially sharing it with family or household members who may be there. They're also really easy to just kind of, like I said, grab and go. I think anything in a muffin shape is pretty convenient when it comes to that. I'm sure you've seen muffin recipes like this, like sometimes people will do meatloaf muffins that are meant to be pre-portioned and that can be nice. So I definitely got some leftover cheese and spinach there. Like I said, that may happen depending on how you portion things out. That's totally okay. If you want to go back and stuff it in the lasagna, you can. I'm just going to kind of move past it for the sake of time though. So we're doing Another scoop of the tomatoes on top of each one of these. And then once your oven is preheated to 375 degrees, you will take this and put it in there on a middle rack and you're gonna let it bake for 20 to 25 minutes. The best indicator is gonna be if the edges of your wonton wrappers start to turn a golden brown. That'll let you know that they are at a good place. It's been baked through and they're nice and crispy. So I'll show you what that looks like. So now we've got our second layer on top of there. They're really popping out of the muffin tin there and they will rise a little bit when they bake as well. So like I said, you'll put that in the oven for 20 to 25 minutes. And let me show you what they look like when they come out for the sake of time. I've gone ahead and pre-prepared some. And there is your end result. Like I mentioned, they come out looking really, really beautiful actually with the way that the edges kind of peel up towards the filling there. Uh, and I can pick one up and try to show you it a little more closely. So it comes out like a little muffin, forming that muffin tin shape. Uh, you can eat them by hand if you want to, like you would a muffin, or you can use a fork and knife and just cut into them. They reheat really, really well, which I think is great for something that you might be taking to work with you or meal prepping with. Uh, if you've got a toaster oven, I think that's the preferred way to reheat it because it helps keep it a little crispy, but throwing it in the microwave for you know, about 15 to 30 seconds, we'll get it up to a nice hot temperature, have it steaming again, and then you can cut into it and enjoy that gooey cheese with the spinach, the tomatoes, that Italian seasoning. So like I mentioned, a serving size of these is going to be two of the muffins. Uh, if you are more active or a larger person, you may want to enjoy three. 
You can also always complement this with some additional foods on the side. We've checked off a couple different food groups here. We have some grains coming from the wonton wrappers, vegetables from the spinach and tomatoes. We've got some dairy from the cheese, protein from the tofu. The only thing we're really missing would be a fruit. So if you eat two of them and you find that you're still a little hungry, having an apple, an orange, a small piece of fruit on the side could pair really, really well with this. So I'm gonna take a moment. I see we do have a message or two in the chat. I wanna make sure to address that today. Let's see here. Okay, I see a question asking about uh, some substitutions for this. So in terms of substitutions, we can swap out a number of different vegetables here. When we think of lasagna, tomatoes are obviously pretty critical to it. Uh, but if you wanted to mix in other vegetables, you definitely could for the spinach. Um, I can see doing some small pieces of broccoli, for example, could be nice in a dish like this. Any vegetable that you put in here, though, you do want to chop up fairly finely as small pieces because we want to make sure that it cooks. If you have like a big piece of broccoli, for example, in there, it's probably not going to cook evenly or cook all the way through. And we want to avoid that. One of the nice things about spinach is that it heats up fairly quickly, so it works well in a dish like this. But really, any small chopped vegetable that you might think could be fun to add to this, you could try to work in and experiment with. If you are someone who eats animal protein, you could certainly try to work in some lean ground beef or ground turkey into the lasagna mixture to make it a little more like a traditional lasagna, and you could substitute the tofu for that meat if you preferred. Um, that would just give you the benefit of, you know, having that protein without having to buy tofu if it's something that you're unfamiliar with. Though, if you've never had tofu before, this is an easy recipe to experiment with it. It's fairly low maintenance. And you probably won't even taste the tofu. It's just going to add some additional protein in there. Okay. All right. And I don't see any more. Oh, I see another one. Okay. So here's another actually suggestion saying kale would be good as well. I agree. Kale would definitely be a good substitute substitution for the spinach. That's another kind of durable leafy green, I guess. And when I say durable, I mean one that would hold up to the heat fairly well. So kale could definitely be an option. Um, someone asked if you have to wrap it in wax paper in order to freeze it. For something like this, I would recommend using like a layer of wax paper if you're stacking them in between to prevent them from accidentally sticking to one another whenever you store it. I have a Tupperware container in the fridge that just has a bunch of these sitting side by side, but I'm hesitant to stack them vertically because I do think that they would sort of stick uh, with the cheese on the bottom into contact with the other one. So wax paper could definitely help with that. Um, I haven't actually experimented with freezing them myself. I've only kept them in the refrigerator. They hold up great in the refrigerator. I know that you can freeze traditional lasagna, so I don't see a reason why this wouldn't work. Um, but I will say your mileage may vary. I have not tested that myself just yet. So we're going to be sending out a copy of the nutrition information as well as the recipe for today. So if you're interested in making it at home, you'll have the opportunity to do that. We'll also include a link to the recording in case you want to view it again or share it with a colleague. And there'll be a link to a short survey where you can let us know what you thought of today's session. And if you've got any ideas for future sessions or some comments on things we could change to improve the event. In case you aren't aware, we do a whole bunch of different types of events here at EDWS. Tomorrow we'll be doing a guided meditation and yoga session. That'll be at 12 p.m. So if you're interested, you can definitely sign up for that. It is on the GSU calendar as well as our EDWS website. If you don't already get email notifications, we send out a weekly email that has a list of all the events we'll be doing for the week. If you're not on that mailing list, you can email us at edws at gsu.edu, and we'll be sure to add you there. Well, thank you everyone for attending today. I appreciate your time and hope you enjoyed the session. Have a great rest of your week.